puzzle? Logic games have been around much longer than video games. Right back to dominoes, chess or mahjong, we have been taxed with single repetitive yet compelling games that draw us in. From the Rubik's Cube to Simon Says, these simple pick up but addictive challenges ignite our cerebral engine. Games in electronic form also used these simple elements pretty much from day one. Minesweeper was a regular icon seen on desktops from Windows 3.1 onwards, and many of the classics such as Lemmings, Breakout, or even Pac-Man have all focused on a simple yet compulsive perpetual task to draw us in like a drug. The grandfather and easily the most famous of these is Tetris. Russian Alexei Pachinov designed this puzzler in the mid 80s, although thanks to Russian government ownership he never actually earned a penny until the late 90s from it, something he surely made up for since then. Now this simple Tetrominoes, four squares connected in seven varieties stacker has shipped on almost every format, medium, electron powered device you may have owned. The true defining moment arrived in 1990, a year earlier elsewhere, and was the biggest game in my school playground at the time thanks to the all-conquering Game Boy. Tetris was the pack-in game and for many of us, the only game we needed. Many of my break and lunch times revolved around high school challenges. This was serious business and seriously addictive. So inspiring was Tetris that Sega bought the rights to an incredible mimic in columns, which also packed in them with their own Game Gear handheld in a bid to mirror its success. But history states that outcome. Its biggest hook and I believe the single biggest reason the Game Boy dominated the Game Gear and the far superior Lynx was Tetris. Oh yeah, and that incredible battery life. Kids, parents and even grandparents all took an interest in this new handheld craze, but Tetris was the star as the number one selling game on the Game Boy and the colour combined. That base challenge of connecting a horizontal line never gets old and surprisingly it becomes far easier to see the pattern the more you play. History may just be repeating itself again, maybe, as the latest PlayStation exclusive Tetris Effect, named after the medically confirmed condition, launched last week on both consoles and a fully integrated VR mode that is a step above what I expected. Now the aim is the same as before, we've not got a redesign of the core game, this is Game Boy Tetris as you know it, falling shapes, align them up, join a row and score higher as you clear them. What is new is the vision of Tetris now comes from the great mind of Tetsuo Mitsuguchi, of Res fame and like that Dreamcast star, it is an audio visual assault on the senses. They share the same use of music being controlled or formed by your actions. The symbiotic link is more engrossing now. Over 30 levels are included and the core journey mode takes you on one you will never forget and if like me, will keep returning to. The game board takes up a small view in your vision with so many blank spaces and voids around you, but not for long. As you start turning blocks and building shapes, little flashes of particles catch your eye. Is that a whale? Did I just see a flaming sacrifice? The music can start slow, moody and calming, then as the line scores increase and the speed, so does the tempo. Vocals fade in, bass starts thumping, or the rhythm changes dependent on the level, the score or the stage within. Even on a flat 2D screen, this is one hell of an experience, taking hold of you like very few games can at this level. The simplicity of the challenge, hypnotic pulsing visuals and the magnificent soundtrack elevate this from a game to a state of mind. It has been created using Unreal Engine 4 and like the early demos we saw of the engine, particle effects are front and center. Objects, characters are comprised of point cloud particle scripts, allowing them to dance, sway, swim and move with grace whilst pulsing and flashing with the music and the score. They break up as each beat comes in. As your points rise or you land a Tetris or multiple, they can break apart mid-flow only to reform again. Continuing the vector style of res, it may look simple, but these 3D shapes are generated by thousands of particles that are managed by the GPU and deliver the distinct style the game has. Has. Crowned with a dynamic light show, it assaults your senses at every turn. Just as I used to lose hours in a day trying to beat others or my own score, the years have rolled right back to that same compulsion. Yet, it is all the more encapsulating as the 60Hz updates and even 4K resolution. Well, actually, it's not 4K. It's 2688 by 1512 on the Pro and it's 1920 by 1080p on the PS4. But both versions offer a crisp and sharp image with pure electronic experience that is as human, tranquil and beautiful as it is addictive, exhilarating and relentless. 
One of the ways it works so well is that, like the game itself, everything is so simple. Start your journey, choose a zone, and then work your way through. The aim of getting a Tetris is merely the start of that constant itch to perfect the unattainable. Yet you continue nonetheless. Even with that done, you can challenge others around the globe with leaderboards and some high schools already there. The other modes mix up the game as you play, flipping the screen and more. Added to this is the zone option. Build up the meter and then fire it when things get really tough. Stopping time so blocks no longer fall, but you can mix up the board and try to clear it down before it all starts again, breaking free of that four row limit for the very first time. This stay of execution, like the entire thing, simply simple yet brilliant, sometimes being the proverbial tide turner on a level or score. You can jump between these modes as you wish and everything has that same instant pick up, play and put down to fit into your minimal free time. It really suits my lifestyle and modern game time. The game needs to be played with total immersion, 7.1 or headphones in a darkened room are absolute nirvana as you can almost enter a zen state, focused on nothing more than the task at hand and those peripheral distractions from success. The mood is simply unique in that regard, having you lose 30 to 40 minutes without even realising it. Now VR takes this to a true next level and it really sells the defining and individual aspect that only this medium can deliver. The Pro boosts the resolution again, running at a native 1080p in here, but it's still 60Hz and interpolated on the movement, but it does look very sharp and clean, and even the PS4 looks very good, slightly lower than that 1080p resolution. Everything I've mentioned here is amplified by 10 when you strap on the helmet. Music grabs you even more. The darting bodies, swirling effects or flickering lights give a sense of alien worlds or wind-swept havens. It is here you can really lose all sense of your surroundings. Low to no sickness in VR due to the lack of motion. Aside between stages, it takes your children, your wife or other real-life demands to suck you out of it. I came home this weekend after a hectic week of work and after an hour in here, I actually found Felt calmer, more alert and happier than I did prior. Not because of VR, but because it feels almost like a spiritual occurrence that actually clears your mind. Nothing else matters but sinking those squares. What I love about the game medium is that rules need not apply. Although many, many games, teams and studios do follow a similar path, we can see, play and enjoy such variety that almost no other medium can achieve. Indie titles tend to take me back to those halcyon early days of games I grew up with, and Tetris Effect is a shining beacon of that, free, open-ended canvas that it can deliver, transforming an old and worn game into a truly magnificent, calming and transcending title that offers much more than just a game almost an oasis. It is a state of mind. If this is the Tetris effect condition and what it delivers, then I've already contracted the disease. A mesmerizing, refreshing reminder that original, simple ideas are nearly always the best. And if you have PSVR, this will convince anyone just how different VR is. And if not, the 2D version is equally breathtaking and an absolute must-buy for anyone who enjoys thinking games or craves something different yet familiar. It's a triumph. And if you are thinking about picking up a VR headset, now is the best time ever. £180 for the PSVR, and there's so many great games that I've covered in depth before. Things like this, Astrobot, the seminal Wipeout, Resident Evil, Gran Turismo. There's so many titles now in VR that I just could go on and on. And I've covered as many as I can at the moment. But if you are thinking or on the fence about VR, this is yet another title. 
that really pushes the medium on over the 2D versions, which themselves are still absolutely incredible. Anyway, that's it. It's a short review. I didn't get it for a review copy, unfortunately. It's my own version that I bought, and I keep trying to get more review copies, but it doesn't seem to happen as often as I'd like. I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and share where appropriate, and also follow me over on Twitter, where you can talk to me about this or anything else you want to. I'll catch you on the next one.